Hello there, my name is Richard from Silent Peak and welcome to this Gigapixel 8 review. So what is Gigapixel 8? Well, Gigapixel 8 is an AI-powered image upscaler that uses AI algorithms to anticipate and insert additional detail into your image as it is enlarged. As a result, images upscaled in Gigapixel can potentially look more detailed than the smaller image from which they are derived. Now, Gigapixel 8 is a standard alone software application, meaning you can use it independently of any other photography software. However, if you prefer, you can indeed use Gigapixel as a plugin for Photoshop and Lightroom Classic. So what is new in Gigapixel 8? Well, it is generative AI and it comes in the form of two brand new features, Recover and Redefine. So Recover, as the name suggests, is designed to recover particularly low resolution images, whereas as redefine can also be used to enhance and upscale your images, but it can also be used to swap and change elements within your photo. Now, both of these features are incredibly taxing on your computer's hardware, and to that end, Topaz Labs brings us the Cloud Renderer service. With the Cloud Renderer service, instead of rendering the recovered or redefined images on your local hardware, which you are still free to do, we can assign them to our own cloud queue instead, and then that image Image will be processed in the background as we continue to use Gigapixel 8 on other images. However, Cloud Renderer is no free lunch, and to that end, Topaz Labs has invented a brand new currency, credits if you will. Each credit costs from 25 cents each, depending on whether you buy pay-as-you-go credits or subscribe to a monthly plan. And the amount of credits you will spend upsizing any particular image depends on its output size. So for example, an eight megapixel image will cost you far fewer credits than a 50 megapixel image. Now I'm going to speak a lot more about these features later in this gigapixel review, but for now, I'm gonna to return to the basic premise of AI upscaling, and we're gonna review Gigapixel 8 on those terms before coming back to its brand new generative AI features. So what is it like to use Gigapixel 8 as just a standard AI upscaler? Well, very easy. We begin by loading up our image and then we sort of decide what output size we want. We can determine this by simply entering a multiplier. So for example, we can just use x4 to times four, fourfold increase, or we can specify our exact dimensions in inches, centimeters, or pixels. The next thing we must do is choose our AI model. Now there are multiple AI models, and each of these models is designed to suit particular images of varying types of image qualities. Now you have two choices. You can leave Gigapixel in its reliably excellent automatic mode, and it will assess your image and choose which of the AI AI models it thinks suits your image best. But if you would rather choose your own AI model, of course you can, and the easiest way to do it is to enter the Gigapixel 8's revised comparison mode. Here we can view up to four different AI models simultaneously and simply click away the ones that we don't like until we're left with the one that we do. After which we can alter that AI model's properties, namely we can alter the sharpness, the level of detail within the image, uh, apply noise reduction and also apply a fixed compression setting. If you are using Gigapixel 8 to upscale a portrait, we also have the face recovery option and new to Gigapixel 8 is Gen 2 face recovery. Now the irony is, is that Gigapixel has always been my favorite upscaler for upscaling portraits and out of all of the upscalers, Gigapixel needs a face recovery feature the least. Because Gigapixel 8 does such a good job upscaling portraits in the first place, applying additional face recovery tends to result in sort of waxy-like skin tones. That being said, every now and again, Gigapixel does churn out a portrait that looks slightly over-processed and having the face recovery feature to be able to dial that processing back just a little bit in the interest of preserving natural looking features in skin tones is definitely an advantage. So while I don't use it a lot, it is great to have this feature on hand when I do. And if needs be, you can 
can also use Gigapixels 8's crop and gamma tool. Now these features aren't particularly exciting, however they do serve the purpose of reducing Gigapixels dependence on other photography software, thus reducing the likelihood of you having to bounce your image from Gigapixel to another photo editing application, therefore saving you a little bit of time. Now once you have arrived at a result that you like the look of, it is time to export our image. Exporting is simple enough, we just simply choose where we want to put the file, what kind of file it will be. So for example, we can choose what level of quality we want to save the file and choose between formats such as a TIFF, JPEG and PNG. We then export our image and then move on to the next one. Now it's nice to know that this exported image is a copy. Your original image will remain intact. So having determined that Gigapixel 8 could hardly be more straightforward to use, let's find out how good it is. Now the way I like to test upscalers is to begin with a reference image. I then take a copy of that reference image and then shrink it fourfold to 25% of its original size. I then use an upscaler such as Gigapixel 8 to increase that image by fourfold, thus restoring the copy to its original size and thus matching the original reference image. We can then measure the effectiveness of the upscaler by comparing the upscaled result against our original reference image. So here we are, here's our first sample and we can see that not only is Gigapixel's upscale faithful to the original reference image, but it is actually much sharper, more detailed and just a little less noisy. As I've said earlier, Gigapixel 8 is my absolute favourite upscalers for portraits. Unlike some other upscalers which tend to suffer from overprocessing, Gigapixel 8's more delicate touch preserves natural looking features and skin tones. And finally we have our stress test. Now this photo of a lighthouse is an upscaler's worst nightmare, full of lots of unpredictable detail. Now if we look closely we can see that Gigapixel hasn't quite done a perfect job, but it's pretty damn close and viewed at a reasonable distance. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Now as you'll see later on in this Gigapixel review, this result is head and shoulders above the likes of On One Resize and Super Resolution, but we will get to that in a moment. And that moment is now. So how indeed does Gigapixel 8 compare against its alternatives? Well let's begin with Lightroom Super Resolution. Now Lightroom Super Resolution is simply not as good. It also is limited limited to 200% upscales unless you're willing to sort of adopt a clunky workaround. But even if you do, you will find that it is unable to match Gigapixel's fine touch when upscaling portraits, nor can it handle scenes with such unpredictable detail quite as well as Gigapixel. Nonetheless, I like Adobe's super resolution a lot given that it's just a small fraction of your overall Lightroom or Photoshop subscription, it is a bargain and absolutely acceptable for occasional upscaling needs. Nonetheless, if you are looking for the very best upscaler, Gigapixel 8 is the way to go. So how does Gigapixel 8 compare against On One Resize AI 2023.5? Well, the problem is there in the name. On One Resize AI hasn't been updated in some time. Now, even back in 2023, On One Resize AI really did struggle to keep up with Gigapixel 6. And here we are now on Gigapixel 8, and the difference is quite stark. Quite frankly, there is no reason at all to buy on one resize AI unless you can pick it up at a bargain price. Finally, how does Gigapixel 8 compare against its Topaz Labs stablemate, Topaz Photo AI? Well, I can make this real simple for you. Quite frankly, they produce the same result. So long as we are upscaling good quality image, you can expect Gigapixel 8 to put out an image extremely similar to that of Topaz Photo. However, Topaz Photo AI is a little bit different. First of all, it costs twice as much, $199 compared to $99 for Gigapixel. Also, Topaz Photo AI is also a denoiser and a de-blurring sharpening tool, which means it is more useful more often. But 
Topaz Photo AI comes into its own when we combine its talents. So for example, if we are upscaling a blurred photo or upscaling a noise-ridden photo, Topaz Photo AI will be able to produce a result that Gigapixel can't really match. At least that used to be the case. Now that is my segue into Gigapixel 8's new generative AI features. So we have two of these new generative AI features. So let's talk a little bit about Recover. So Recover is simply another AI model, but an advanced AI model designed for the challenging task of upscaling much smaller low resolution images. And overall it can work and sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it produces an amazing result and other times it will produce a result inferior to one of Gigapixel's standard upscale models. Whereas Redefine is a little bit different to Recover. Now you can use Redefine strictly as an enhancement tool. However, you can also use Redefine to basically change the nature of your photo. So for example, we can swap one subject for another. And in this case, you can see a picture of me on the left. And on the right, you can see roughly the same picture, but with an entirely different person in it. Now, as you can see, the enhancement to the image on the right is rather impressive. And I'm very happy with it. However, I wasn't expecting it to trade me for somebody else. That is certainly not what I was looking to do. And that brings us on to our two biggest problems with Recover and Redefine. Like most generative AI tools that I've tested over these recent times, they are extremely unpredictable. For instance, even if we are working on the same photo, we cannot anticipate whether it will give us a good result or not. We cannot anticipate the nature of the result, nor can we repeat a result that we had previously. In other words, each time you run the tool, the result will be different. And that can mean two things. Well, one means is that these tools can produce truly outstanding results, head and shoulders above anything else. But it also means that they can produce results inferior to Gigapixel's standard AI models. Therefore, to get the best out of Redefine and Recover, you basically have to adopt a trial and error rinse and repeat workflow. And this is a big problem. The problem begins with applying these new adjustments. Now, because these features are so taxing on your computer's hardware, you are only able to preview the effect of your adjustments through a small window. Now, each time you apply adjustment or indeed a change an adjustment since the last, you might wait up to a minute for that preview to refresh and it might be shorter or longer depending on the hardware that your computer has. But let's say you can tolerate this sort of delay because ultimately you believe that the result will be worth it. And at the end, when you're happy with that result, you add it to your local queue for render. Now, this render can take an enormous amount of time. Now, after that, I wanted to try something bigger. So I used Recover to de-blur a 20 megapixel image. And after 90 minutes, I gave up when the image was still at 0% render. Now, you shouldn't take these sort of times for granted because for you, it could be very different. So if you are using a laptop computer with integrated graphics, it's entirely possible that rendering these images locally is simply not an option. Alternatively, you might be packing an RTX 4090 and you may find the ways entirely tolerable. But nonetheless, you shouldn't take it for granted that you will wish to use the local render at all. And that brings us on to the cloud renderer. Now, the cloud renderer is seamlessly integrated and it works exceptionally well. So once we've finished sort of applying, redefine and recover to our image, instead of clicking on the classic export button, we just add it to the cloud renderer. It then basically starts to render in the background out in the cloud and once the render is finished which it will render much quicker than it will on your own hardware it is simply deposited in your downloads folder now as i mentioned earlier in this review the currency of choice is credits and each single credit will cost you at most 25 cents if you're on a pay-as-you-go model you can get credits much cheaper if you go on a monthly payment plan so how many credits that you spend depends on the overall output size of your image so an 8 megapixel image will cost you less credits than a 25 megapixel. But because of the rinse and repeat trial and error nature of both of these things that we are not necessarily going to get the result that we want the first time, I expect that you're going to have to use these tools over and over again. And as a consequence, you're going to spend many minutes 
most likely hours rendering these images on your local hardware or spending all your hard earned running your images through the cloud renderer over and over again. Therefore, to sort of draw a conclusion on these two new features, recover and redefine, I have to say that they can be exceptionally good or absolutely terrible. It's always gonna cost you hours or credits and you never quite know when you're gonna get the result that you want. So to conclude, is Gigapixel A any good? Well, if we subtract the generative AI features, the only thing that we are left with is the best AI upscaler on the market today. In other words, no matter how you feel about these two new generative AI features, they take nothing away from an otherwise outstanding product. All that being said, regardless of Gigapixel 8's generative AI potential, if you are planning on upscaling noise-ridden or blurred images, I would still recommend the reliability and speed of Topaz Photo AI. Now, at this point, I would like to tell you that I am indeed a Topaz affiliate. However, I am also an affiliate for On One, Adobe, ACDC, DxO, and many more. Thus, I am somewhat impartial through saturation. However, if you do not want to take my word for any of this and would like to try Gigapixel 8 for yourself, you can. And in the description below, you will find a link to your free Gigapixel 8 trial. My name's Richard from Silent Pig and thank you very much for dropping by.